This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but my testimony continues to be the same. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I've got to give him the praise, the honor, and the glory because he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, God's name is worthy to be praised. Come now, let us make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Let us enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Let us pray. Dear God, for the blessings of a brand new day, we give you thanks. We join in with the hymnologists and declare, morning by morning, new mercies we see. All we have needed, your hands have provided. Great is your faithfulness. Thank you for keeping us through dangers seen and unseen. What an invisible pandemic and virus. We can't see it, but you've kept us. We come to say thank you. You woke us up this morning, started us on our way, gave us another chance. And so now, oh God, if there's anything in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirit that will prevent us from worshiping you, from praising you, from exalting your name, bid it to move right now. Create within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. You are welcome in this place. Come Holy Spirit, come Heavenly Dove with all your quickening power. Kindle a flame of sacred love in these hearts of ours. Now God, I lift up this congregation, those of us who are here, those who are watching virtually at home. You know every problem, you know every concern, you know every challenge that we have. We ask that you to meet us at the point of our need. Where there's sickness, oh God, be a doctor. Where there's trouble, oh God, be a mind regulator. Where there's confusion, be our peace because you'll promise to keep us in perfect peace if we keep our mind stayed on you. Where there is bereavement of spirit because of the loss of loved ones, Make real the words of the psalmist, weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Now, God, take charge of this service. Have your will and have your way. We've heard from the political activists. We've heard the news reports. But, oh, God, today we need to hear from you. Speak to us, oh, God, through the singing of the songs, through the reading of the scripture, through the proclamation of your word, speak to us that we might be transformed by your presence and by your power. For today, O oh God, we would see Jesus and we would have gone down from this place. Let there be no doubt that we have been in the presence of the Lord. And we promise you that as doors are open, as shackles fall off, as chains are broken, we won't take any credit for it. But we'll tell everybody that it's because of Jesus. It's in the master's name of Jesus the Christ we pray. And may our song forever be more love to thee, O Christ. Amen.
show some love to our music ministry. I'm so glad that they can't crown him till I get there. And then we're going to crown him Lord of Lord and King of Kings. If God's done anything for you this week that you could not do for yourself, can you give our awesome God some awesome praise? Did he wake us up this morning? Did he start us on our way? Did he give us another chance? I'll bless the Lord, not just sometimes, but I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I don't know about you, but I've tasted and I can tell you that the Lord is good. He alone is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. God's name is worthy to be praised. Every now and then I just count my blessings and I name them one by one. I count my many blessings and I see what God has done. He woke me up this morning, put food on my table, shoes on my feet, gave me a place to live and food to eat. And here we are in worship one more time, giving praise, honor, and glory. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it is the spirit of the Lord. You know, this is election season, and um, it is so very, very important that we vote. I know you're watching the news, and they're trying to suppress the vote. They're trying to take us backwards, and we have to make sure that we fight hard to do that that so many people have died for. Fortunately, in New York, we don't have some of the issues that are going on in Florida and in Texas as of yet. But there is a force that is seeking to silence us because they know that when we speak, things happen. And so early voting starts actually June the 12th. I'll try to have for you during my noonday prayer hour the information that you need if you want to do early voting. And then certainly the primary or the elections are on June, I believe, the 22nd. So make sure that you make every effort. And we have our assembly person, council people, judges, so very, very important. I will be, I don't know how I got in this, but I'm in it. I'm going to be hosting um, a reception for Judge Dwayne Esther Paul, who's running for circuit judge. Um, and so that will be here at the church on this Friday from 11 to about 1. So if you're available, you can come by to give your support and to let not so much, I'm not telling you who to vote for, and really can't from this perspective, but the fact that I'm hosting her should say something. But I hope that you will, um, if you can, come by and be um, supportive. Um, today, for three minutes, if he is not done in three minutes, y'all stand up. And we have Mr. John Williams, he is actually, um, the former president of the 70th Precinct Clergy Interfaith Council. I'll tell you this for him so he won't have to tell you that it was really his idea that we should have a clergy council for this community because we did not have that. And so it was his vision and he talked with me. I agreed, I became the first vice president because he's running for the 40th district it was a conflict of interest so, he, interest, so he stepped down as president. Somehow your pastor got that position, so I need your prayers. Because working with preachers is more difficult than working with you. And all preachers are egomaniacs. We voted on yellow and then somebody comes say they think it ought to be purple. I'm like, Lord have mercy. But I know that God answers prayer because my patience is at a place that I did not, have never seen before. Well, anyway, without any further pontification, won't you receive John Williams? I want to say thank you very much, my esteemed friend, venerable friend and pastor, Dr. Thornton, for the privilege of coming before Salem 
those of you uh, who would know, uh, uh, I'm an, a minister, I'm an urban public health specialist, uh, community activist and uh, advocate for public health and a chaplain. Uh, I'm a member of the Flatbush Seventh-day Adventist Church in the next block uh, for, I would say, 25 years. And uh, we have been so privileged to be associated with Salem, uh, one of the oldest churches in Brooklyn, especially the black church. And I appreciate the fact to come before you because of, for the 40 years that I have been serving in this community, you know, with a degree in theology and in urban public health and community health education. I could have been working for the hospitals or medical centers or community organizations, but I choose to be with the New Creation Ministries and the New Creation Community Health Empowerment Incorporated that we formed over, I would say, 38 years ago in central Brooklyn. So we have been serving uh, this community uh, as I said, for 40 years, and over the years, I have been pushed, actually, to run for city council, but my support for Matthew Eugene, the current uh, council member, has been very strong from the beginning, and I decided to wait until his term was up, and now I'm, I'm doing this. Ladies and gentlemen, um, you know, public service is my, is my forte. I love people, and I love people. Flatbush. <laughs> so I have a special love for Flatbush. And I have been fighting for and will continue to fight in the City Hall for quality of life and public safety, of which Pastor talked about. For over 15 years, we have been dealing with gun violence in the community and uh, ending gun violence and, uh, you know, public safety as a whole and uh, creating more true affordable, true affordable housing, and uh, equitable health care delivery for all people. And when it comes to health equity, uh, most of the folk in the health department here at the church know that I work with the Department of Health Borough of Brooklyn Interfaith Advisory Group to bring about health care delivery for all. Small business recovery, especially in the, in the pandemic era, and their improvement. And of course, better paying jobs for our young people. Uh, you know, we want to get them off the street as we form the Flatbush Leadership Academy and working with the Explorer Program and the Precinct to bring our youth into valuable work and positive things within our community. And of course, one of the major crises we have fought for years with our clergy going to Washington, the White House, Capitol Hill, fighting for immigration, which is a major crisis within our community. So we are fighting to bring about transformation in this community which can happen. And I am going there to change the paradigm instead of uh, representing the community I'm going to represent. But most of all, I want to be a servant leadership. I want to be a servant of the people. And so I beg your support. I beg for your prayers. And remember, it's ranked choice voting. So you don't, only, you can, you don't have to select one person. You have five choices. So if you don't, I appreciate if you can make me your number one. But if not, please give me your number two. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Williams. He's, he's been asking me for an opportunity. And finally, the Spirit said this would be the day. Okay, a few notices and announcements very, very quickly, and then we'll move on. On Father's Day, on Father's Day, the third Sunday, we will be having communion and baptism. We'll have communion and baptism. I think it's amazing that God has added to God's church in this pandemic season. And I see no reason to wait. I remember reading in the Bible about the Ethiopian eunuch and he was reading out of Isaiah, chapter 53. Philip was transported and sat with him in the chariot. And Philip said, do you understand what you're reading? He said, how can I understand unless I have someone to explain? And Philip began to explain to him the word of God. 
and to tell them about the importance of being baptized into the fellowship. And he said um, to Philip, here is water. Why can't I be baptized now? And Philip baptized them. So in the Baptist church, as I was sharing with some of the deacons this morning, we are autonomous. We can do what we want to do when we want to do it. Uh, we don't have to wait for a special time. I share with them that if God would anoint me as he did Peter who preached and 3,000 folk joined the church, we could have baptism every Sunday. So I hope that you will please join us. Um, those new persons who are here, please meet me. We'll have our new members class today. We've been meeting virtually, but we'll have, have our new members class um, on today. And so I want you to prepare for that on the third Sunday. And then, of course, I think that we men sometimes get a bit um, shortchanged. All kinds of cards and flowers and candy and balloons for Mother's Day. The poor brothers who work hard keep you sisters straight. <laughs> Say that love. Uh, so please, uh, we will, we're open to Father's Day cards. We will still celebrate Father's Day on the third Sunday. I think that's pretty much what I have. Then, of course, we have worship every Sunday at 1045. Please join us for our noonday prayer and devotional hour every day at noon. We have our Bible study on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Um, we have a guest teacher this week. And our teacher will be Principal Michael Walker on this Wednesday. <laughs> victory in Jesus. How many of you believe that? There is victory in Jesus. But many days we don't feel victorious during these tough times we're in. But it's through the valley, it's through those tough times that he does his best work. So we say, show yourself mighty, show yourself strong. We want to dedicate this song today to Sister Sharon Rock. So if you know the words, please join us. Strong. Strong. Oh, in the no. midst of us, 
that Jesus brought in righteousness. We dare not trust in a sweeter frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. So we ask that he show himself mighty in our hearts, show himself mighty in our jobs. Show yourself strong. Show yourself strong. withered and the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. A lesson for the morning is Psalm 103. When you have it, won't you please stand if you can. Hear now the word of the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment, for all that I oppress. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has prepared his throne in heaven, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. 
the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Anybody glad to be here? Anybody glad to be here? I still don't see every hand. Everybody glad to be here? Oh, yeah. Mm. There's a wonder of sunset at evening. The wonder at sunrise I see. But the that God loves me. Oh, the wonder of it all, the wonder of it all, just to think that God loves me. stars and the sun, but the wonder of wonders that thrills my soul is the wonder that has only sure you hear me. There's the wonder of sunset at evening. The wonder at sunrise we see. But the God loves me.
some praise. Come on, give him some praise. Give him some praise. He's got, he's a busy man, but he has a time to love me, to love you. Come on, give him some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise, honor, and glory. I know somebody's wondering that we're a little longer today, it's closer to the time that we would be almost ready to go, but I just thought as I was reviewing the service that God is just so good that we should spend a little more time just giving him the praise, the honor, and the glory. We can go ahead and sing, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, because he's worthy to be praised. And then we think about the wonder of it all, just to think that the God who created the heavens and the earth, the moon and the stars, the sea and everything that there is in all of the planets, that that God loves us. When, every, when somebody tells you that, that you're not all that, you tell them that they don't know what they're talking about. Because I read Psalm 8 that said, what is man that God is mindful of him? He's made him just a little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. When I think that he walks with me and he talks with me and every now and then he lets me know that I'm his and he is mine, I can take a moment and just give him praise, honor, and glory because he's worthy to be praised. Our God is not on on any clock because he is time and he is chronos and he is kairos and he is eternal from everlasting to everlasting he is finite he's infinite he's a, to be exalted he's omnipotent he's omniscient he's everywhere at the same time he knows everything he knows the end from the beginning and he alone is worthy to be praised lord we love you we praise you we honor you and we give you glory for there is no God like our God. What I want to talk about today, for the time that's mine, so glad to see you, Mother Tucker. I tried to tell somebody that Miss Tucker is my mother, and they tell me she's the mother of the church. No, we don't have church mothers here. But she has adopted me as her son. I'm delighted. And I'll tell you about Sister Tucker. She has a wonderful spirit. She says, Son, I would come to church, but at my age, the doctor advised me not to come. And then she told me she's going for the vaccine. I said, well, how are you going to get the vaccine, Sister Tucker? She said, I'm going to walk. And so now she's fully vaccinated. But she says, I love the church so much that every now and then I told Pat, just put me in the car and drive me by the church. <laughs> it's because of saints like that that pray that the Spirit of God is here when we get here. Some folk didn't come before the pandemic, and then when the pandemic came, they made that an excuse. But God knows your heart, because he's a search of the intents and the hearts of men. Well, let me move on to the task at hand, because I do have to make some fish today, and I got to meet with the new members. I want to talk from this thought, it's time for renewal. It's time for renewal. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of your grace divine, let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, precious Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Now, O oh God, allow the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart to be found acceptable in thy sight. It's in the strong, matchless name of Jesus the Christ, whom we can say the wonder of it all, just to think that you love us. In that name we pray. Amen. Here we are halfway, can you believe it, through 2021, the first Sunday in June, the sixth month of the year. 
we have much to be grateful for. God has kept us through the worst pandemic that we've ever seen in our lifetime. Well, we're not at the end of this crisis, but the numbers have come down drastically. In New York, we have now less than 1% of infection of this deadly virus. We have witnessed an increase in crime in our cities and some of the highest unemployment that we have seen in years. The racism in our nation seems to have multiplied in this season, and we have witnessed the escalation of police brutality against the very citizens that the police swore to protect. Yet, through it all, God has kept us. And here we are. We have celebrated Ascension Sunday. Sister Longchamp, glad to see you. We have celebrated Pentecost Sunday. Last week we talked about the mystery of the Trinity. And I just felt that in this season, we need to hear God afresh and anew. It is essential that our relationship is renewed with a loving God who can bring us through any situation. David understands this more than any other biblical character. Saul tried to kill him because of jealousy. He fell in sin with Bathsheba. He was a murderer and a liar, yet he was a man after God's own heart because he knew how to turn to God and say, create within me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. It's me, it's me, O God, standing in the need of prayer. Because he knew how to be contrite, how to ask for forgiveness, and more importantly, he understood how to get God's attention to the end, that he would be renewed in the power of Yahweh, the promising keeping God. This book of Psalms is a universal book for all religions, all people. There are Psalms of lament. Example, Psalm 6. My soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord, how long? Turn, Lord, and deliver me. Save me of your unfailing love. When you don't know where to go in the Bible, go to the book of Psalms. There are Psalms of encouragement. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. There are psalms of direction and praise. I will sing to the Lord a new song, for he that is mighty has done great things. And then every Sunday we do Psalm 100. Come now, let us make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. But the most popular psalm, in the Bible, it's not Psalm 100, it's not Psalm 23, it's not Psalm 91. But the most popular psalm in the Bible is Psalm 103. I want you to turn there, just keep your Bible open, and just walk with me through this psalm. It'll speak to you through the rest of the week, as it spoke to me as I was preparing to share with you today. This psalm is, desi is designed to teach us how to be renewed in the power of God. This psalm is a call to individual worship. David wants to bless God, not on the surface, but from the deepest part of his soul. We know that we are mind, body, and soul. The Bible declares that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, and with all thy soul. The soul is the residence of our deepest emotion. The mind and the body comes together in the soul. And so David is talking here, if you're going to be renewed in the power of God, he's not talking about a little surface praise. He's not talking about a little pity pat praise, but he's talking about a deep praise that comes from the soul on the part of an individual who knows that God has been good. And so David cries out, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I want the deepest part of me to speak to the other part of me so that God can know that I love him and that I care and that I'm grateful for what he has done. 
What does it mean um, to bless the Lord? It means to kneel before the Lord, to worship the Lord with all our being, with all of our might, to bless his holy name. Let everything that is within you bless the Lord. Don't worry about what happened at home. You may have gotten a run in your stockings. You may not have had exactly what you wanted to wear. Your kids may have been driving you crazy. You may have gotten a terrible phone call, but now that we're here, we have come in this place to bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Not just part of my body, not just with my head, not just with my looks, but with everything that is within me. When I think about how God has brought us, how God has kept us, how God has never left us, how he's made a way out of no way, I come to death to worship him. I come today to praise him. I come today to give him glory all by myself. You don't have to praise him the way I praise him, but I just ask that you think of his goodness and what he's done for you, and don't worry about who's around you, but give him praise, honor, and glory, because he inhabits the praises of his people. He is worthy to be praised. So if you're taking notes, how are you going to be renewed? You got to have some individual praise. You can't worry about Mary. You can't worry about John. You can't worry about what happened last week. Can't worry about what happened last year. But you've got to wake up like David and declare that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will. I made up my mind all by myself that I will rejoice and be glad in it. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Now, if you're taking notes, David says, the second thing after individual worship is to remember. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Forget, look backwards and remember what God has done. Did he wake you up this morning? Did God keep you from danger seen and unseen? Did he heal your body when you got sick? Did he make a way out of no way? Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings and see what God has done. And then David tells us, what are some of the benefits that God has given us that we ought not forget? He says, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, well, we don't talk like that. In other words, he forgives our sins. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, John 1, 9. If we say we have no sin, then we lie and the truth is not in us. But if we have sin, then we have an advocate with the Father who is Jesus Christ the righteous and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for our sins only but for the sins of the whole world. When we think about it, the Bible says in Isaiah, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way but God has laid upon him the iniquities of us all. We ought to give God praise because the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life. I'm so glad that he looked beyond my faults and saw my knees and gave me another chance and here I am in where I come to preach today to tell you that God is worthy to be praised. I can preach all by myself. I preached and got happy just writing this sermon when I thought about bless the Lord oh my soul and all that was in me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord oh my soul and forget not all of his benefits for us who heal of all thy diseases. Oh, I, I thought about that. Well, there are three kinds of healings if you want to take notes. There's a natural healing. Well, what is that, Reverend? Well, you ever got a paper cut? And you say, oh, God, I don't know where that came from. You nip yourself in the kitchen, and it just bothered you. You didn't put a Band-Aid on it. But in a few days, a week, you don't even know that it was there because God covered it up and looked like it did before. It's a natural kind of healing, uh, you know. And then there's a scientific healing. Um, that's the knowledge that God gives the doctors and nurses. You need to go and do those preventative procedures. Yes, I know you heard me say on noonday prayer a couple of times I had a procedure, yes. Because at my age now, you get your car checked out, um, 
you get your stove checked out at home, you take care of all of these material things, then you ought to take care of this body that God has given us. You know, and when you get to be my age now, uh, I used to say a man's days are three score and ten. That didn't bother me when I was 30. didn't bother me when I was 40. But now that I'm getting closer to the promise, three score is 60 plus 10 is 70, and God's still keeping me, I got to try to take care of this body. So I go to the doctor. I say, okay, sign me up for that colonoscopy. And they, they put you under. Uh, they took so long to bring me out. Angie got nervous, thought maybe something had happened. But God kept me as they kept me under the anesthesia and everything came all right and then I went for an endoscopy uh, what's that when they looked at the bottom then look at the top and let the doctors see what's wrong with you I don't know what's wrong with you folks talking about you don't want to go to the doctor because you don't want to know you want to know God gave the doctors and nurses the knowledge so that we could take care of ourselves they only know what God allows them to know because God is omniscient preach James and then there's supernatural healing. Anybody went to the doctor, the doctor said, oh, I see a spot on your lungs. This could be cancerous. And you got nervous, you prayed all night and all day. Oh God, don't let it be cancerous. A few weeks later, you went back to the doctor. The doctor did the test, couldn't find anything. That's supernatural healing. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Is there anybody here this morning? God has healed you naturally. God has healed you scientifically. God has healed you supernaturally. You ought to give him some praise. You ought to give him some honor. You ought to give him some glory because he's worthy. I thank God for the mountains. I thank him for the valley. I thank him for the storms he's brought me through. Because if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. I wouldn't know what faith in God could do. Uh, let me try to move on. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, he redeems our sins. God placed upon Jesus the price that we could not pay. He who knew no sin became sin for us. God dealt with his son according to our sins. He gave his son what we deserved because the wages of sin is death. God allowed his son to die for us. That was the penalty that we needed to pay, but he redeemed us. It's like when you have back in the day, and I've had to do this, your money run funny, you got to put it in the pawn shop. Say, how much can I get for this? You get a hundred, I know y'all don't know nothing about this. And, and then the only way to get it back is you got to pay to redeem it back. Well, we were in hot to sin, but, and we could not pay the price because the wages of sin is death. But God loved us so much that he laid upon Jesus the iniquity of us all. He paid the price and the bill came back paid in full. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it. Hallelujah. 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 White as snow. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. I'm almost done. Who crowneth thee with love and kindness and tender mercy. We're not here this morning because we've been that good. It's good to see you, um, Lord, your sister. Uh, my, my mind, I'm getting older now. What's your name? Lydia, Lydia. Yeah, I got Lydia over there and a Lydia over there, Lydia everywhere. <laughs> but because of his loving kindness and his tender mercy, we're here this morning. Not that we've kept his commandments that well. Some churches have closed up. Some business have gone out of business. Some folk have died. 
who would want it to be here. Not everybody died from the virus, but people died from other situations. And some people are alive, but they're still dead because they don't have the spirit of God in them. But God has kept us. I give him praise because of his loving kindness and his tender mercy, who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. Oh, I, I felt my youth. Um, where's Brother Long? I, I felt Brother Long had a fish fry at his house. He's, he's everywhere. He's part of the block association and they had a fish fry. And I rode my bicycle from home to the church yesterday and then I walked over to the outreach that we had on Ocean and Church. And I said, you know, Long is frying fish. Got in my bicycle, rode my bike over there, and he had one neighbor, I want to meet her again. And, and Ms. Long said, this is my pastor. And she says, that's your pastor? She said, I was looking for an old man. I tell you, he'll renew your strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up like the wings of eagles. They'll run and not get weary. They'll walk and not faint. He made known his ways unto Moses and the acts unto the children of Israel. I, I, I never understood that too good, so I looked that up. And it meant that God revealed himself to Moses. Moses says, Lord, I, I'd like to see your face. God said, you can't see my face because the power of my face to see me, no man can look on the face of God and live. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll hide you in the cliff of the rock. And when I pass by, you can see my glory. And so God allowed Moses to be a witness of the revelation of God. And then God brought him through the Red Sea. And then God saved the Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro who would not worship King Nebuchadnezzar. And they declared that if our God is not able to deliver us, we won't trust him another. Okay, so how do you be renewed? How do you be renewed? Somebody's taking notes and I lost you, so I'm going to bring you back together. Number one, bless the Lord with all of your being. Every now and then, just give him praise, honor, and glory. Don't forget God's blessings. Forget not what God has done for you. And then you need to understand the mind of God. And so I looked up the attributes of God. I mean, God is awesome. He has more attributes than these, but I come this morning to tell you that God is all powerful. God is all knowing. God is sovereign. God is absolute truth. God is just. God is loving. God is merciful. And God is faithful. Here it is right now. The Lord ah, is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide us. He's not going to beat us forever. He, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. But here it is. But far as high as is the heaven, so great is his mercy towards those that fear him. And then David gets poetic here. David is deep. You know, David was really, really very, very smart. He was very poetic. He was a singer, and he knew how to communicate with God. And when you get into the deep places of God, God will show you things and speak to you in ways that other folk cannot understand. God has a message just for you. I dare you to get alone with him and declare that you're going to bless his name with all of your being. God will show you things that you cannot see with the natural eye. And God says to David, I want you to understand that far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Ah, that's deep now because you see, um, if you go north and you keep going north, you'll end up going south and you'll end up back to where you started from. But if you go from the east to the west, the east and the west will never meet. That is how God has put away our sins so that they can never come back to haunt us. Some of us abound in sin, but God has already forgiven us. We just have to forgive ourselves. God has washed it away with his blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can cleanse and make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunge beneath that flow, lose all their guilty stains. Like the pity of a father has the Lord's compassion been. 
I'll get in trouble now, but it's okay. Hopefully I get in and out quick. But my son came yesterday and he was trying to get to a concert. Had his little friend with him. He was running late. And he says, he don't know how he's gonna make it. He gonna be late. Don't know how he's gonna get there. But I'm his father. I said, son, do you want me to call you an Uber? He said, yes. I got the Uber app, thanks to you. I put it in there, Uber came, went on across town. I was talking to his mother. His mother said, I wouldn't have done that. You don't even take the God, but y'all don't do the things that he ought to do. I, he said, but you do that because you're his father. Yes, that's how God is for us. He doesn't deal with us according to our sins. He doesn't deal with us according to the things that we've done wrong. Like the pity of a father have the Lord's compassion been. I give him praise, I give him honor, and I give him glory. And then as I come to close, this is the part I didn't understand, but, but this pandemic has me reading more than I ever read before. So as I get this information, I got to give it to you. I was in a choir one time. The choir director was named Mr. Motley, and he would be directing like Adrian directs you guys, and he would be closing his eyes. And he said, something's out over here. And invariably, he would point to me. <laughs> so, some of the students say, Mr. Motley, you know, why do you work us so hard? He said, because I want to die and take all this music with me. I don't want to take this, this knowledge in my head, and I don't give it to you. Ain't going to do you any good. God blesses us to be a blessing to somebody else. So here it is. For he knoweth our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And the place thereof shall it know no more. God is dealing with our finiteness, our mortality, the fact that we, as living beings in flesh, have a termination date. But then God juxtaposes our mortality to God's internality, internalness, his infiniteness. God will never end. He's the same yesterday and forever. There is no beginning, there is no ending from him. He is the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the ending. He's the first and the last. And so because we are his, and because John 3, 16 says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. So that when we come to our finite end on this side of the mountain, then God takes us over into his infiniteness, into his eternality. And so he says, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto the children's children. I close now. If you're taking notes, praise the Lord with all of your being. Remember what God has done. Understand the attributes of God. When this happens, we will be renewed and we can end just as we began. And that is exactly what David does as he begins to end this psalm and he thinks about what God has done. And I want to end this sermon the way I began it. I want to end this worship the way we started. I want to end it with us just worshiping and praising God, just thanking God for what he's done. And so David says in verse 20, bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength and that do his commandments, hearken unto the voice of the Lord. God's got angels. He's got seraphims and seraphims that praise him 24-7. They cry out, as we said the other week, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. They bless the Lord and they give him praise, honor, and glory. Bless ye the Lord, all ye hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. That's us. We have a responsibility to give God praise, honor, and glory because we've got a song that the angels cannot sing. They know nothing of sin and his sting, but we've been redeemed by the power of the blood of the Lamb. And then David David says, bless the Lord, all his works and all 
places of his dominion. In other words, let all God's creation bless the Lord. Let the sea bless the Lord. Let the wind bless the Lord. Let the trees bless the Lord. Let everything that hath breath bless the Lord because he's worthy to be praised. And then David concludes, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, deep down within. I want you to know, God, that I love you. I want you to know, God, that I thank you. I want you to know, God, that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Somebody ought to get up and give him some praise. You've been sick, but God made you well. He made a way out of no way. Somebody thought you would never get to church, but here we are in worship one more time. Don't give God just a little sedity praise. Don't give him just a little pity pat, but bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Let all Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is in me. Bless his name. I love the Lord. He heard my plea and pitied every groan. When trouble comes, I'll hasten to his throne. If you want to have a Pentecostal experience, then we got to all be all together in one place, on one accord, and then the Holy Ghost will come. And when the Holy Ghost will come, he'll teach you. He'll preach to you. He'll show you the way. And you can say, the way I used to walk, I don't walk no more. The way I used to talk, I don't talk no more. There's a great change since I've been born. Somebody praise him. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's in me. Bless his holy name. I love the Lord. He heard my plea and pitied every groan. When trouble comes, I hasten to his throne, because he's worthy to be praised. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we honor you, and we give you glory. And as we praise God, the only thing we can do, and David understood this, it was in the praise of God that God heard his confession of sins. If we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. You don't have to come perfectly, but I'm so glad that he'll take us just as we are, just as I am. this morning Everybody glad you came to church today. Yes. I'm glad to see you. We'll be here next week, same time, same station. Thank those of you who are watching us at home. God loves you and so do we. And I thank God for the technology. Oh, yeah. Final comments as we get ready to go. Thank those of you who support this church as in with your offerings. Some of you have been so faithful. As I can, from time to time, I try to write you a note to let you know that I appreciate. That's the only way that we're able to do this ministry. As you can see, we have our screens, and we will be live streaming very soon. So whatever we're doing in here, they'll be able to see out there. 
we spent about $40,000. We got more things that we need to do to get the technology and to do that. We had a $16,000 job to do outside right over this entrance because the cement that holds up was loosening and it could have fallen on somebody's head. And so we were able to do that because of your gifts. Now I know the sidewalk on the East 21st Street, it, it's our sidewalk from the corner all the way to the end of the parking lot, that's us. What happened on Albemarle Road is that there were some issues with the gas company and they tore up the street so they fixed it. It needed to be fixed anyway. I wish there was an issue on this street but if that's not, it doesn't happen. So we need, and then I'm trying to pay the salaries and those kinds of things. That happens because of your giving. And then we are gonna continue to support our ministries both here at home and abroad. So continue to be supportive. Malachi chapter three, will a man rob God that you have robbed me? You say, Lord, wherein have we robbed you? God's in your tithes and your offerings, therefore you are cursed with a curse, even this whole nation. Bring me all the tithes in the storehouse that it may be meat in my house, saith the Lord. You try me, you prove me. See what I'll do for you. See if I won't open the winds of heaven, pour blessings upon you that you shall not have room enough to receive them. Dear God, for the gifts that the people have given and will give, those that have a desire to give, we pray that you would bless these gifts that may be used for the building of your kingdom to come just a little closer on earth in the hearts of men and women. For we recognize that all things come from you and you only allow us to give you back a portion of that that you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. can remain standing. What are we going to sing, Brother Michael and Lydia? You are... All right. Let's do it. Have a wonderful Sunday afternoon. God bless you real good. Thank you very much. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance. May he grant you his peace and his love. And you're going in and you're going out. You're down sitting and you're uprising. May he give you a wonderful week through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever.